story is being told, Eliza's and Tom's. And they start at the same place. And then one goes north, the Eliza, right? And one goes south, Tom. Okay, so Eliza's part of the story teaches you about what? The, the northern part. The, the Quaker. How to escape, right? The escaping slave and what, what that escaping slave is going to go through. It also addresses laws. The Fugitive Slave Act is addressed. Okay, you learn about the Quakers. What becomes significant about the Quakers? They actually, in the beginning, they own slaves. I, I right? But what, what, with the Quakers, okay, not believing in slavery, are they a large member of American citizens, or is it a small community? It's a small community. Yeah, this is a small community, right? So this is a small community, um, and they're, they're doing so much. These people are willing, and I haven't printed my, my sign in sheet yet. I'll print it right now. These people right here are choosing the laws of God over the laws of the country, right? And so this represents that idea with the politicians, how she's saying with these politicians, pick what's right, not what's popular. Now, what about Tom? If she reveals the escaping aspect, like how a slave could escape to the north, and everything involved with what's in the north, because you also do see people in the north who are not forgiving, who are not... Um, this way, yeah, slave, slavery, right? Slave treatment and slavery. Through Tom, or through, not through him necessarily in his experiences, but through what he observes, you see a lot of atrocities, right? Through his journey. With, when you, what about Prue? Like that story is like I think one of the ones that stays with me forever. You can't get it out of your mind. With Prue and how she turns into a drunk and then she's whipped to death and she dies. There are flies all over her. The imagery behind that is disgusting. But think about her story. What drives her to that? Watching her baby starve to death. And if you think about that, really, like watching your baby starve to death. Yes. It's not going to happen in one day. So she's powerless. And every day, every day having to see that. Also think about this. She's forced to be with her master all the time and leave the baby. So, what do babies do? Okay. What else? Why? Star. Poop. poop. Thank you. Oh. Yeah, they pee, they poop. So this baby is in its own excrement all day long, right? Starving to death, crying all day long, and that's what she had to see every day of her child. So if you think about that, Tom sees this. What about the mom who jumps off the ship? What about what Tom experiences once he gets to sign the breeze? So through Tom, you see everything related to how slaves are treated, how they're sold, right? How different owners treat them. The repercussions of not freeing your slaves, you see that as well. So this structure kind of reveals all of that. That's one way to look at the structure. Another way to look at the structure can be related to the types of slave owners. She intentionally takes you from Kentucky and nice Mr. Shelby to Simon Legree. So you have to ask yourself, why not start with Simon Legree? Oh, so they can know what, what's right. Like, the nice way of treating them. Maybe it's to show, like, the journey that a slave can go through. The journey that a slave can go through, but what else through this? What is revealed? It's like a compare and contrast. Compare and contrast. Well, think about like um, how they say like kids to game. You guys, you just, it's probably easier for you to go out and kill someone because you're so desensitized. Why do they say that? What are you doing that desensitizes you? Video games and killing people in video games or watching a lot of violence, whatever. Whether it's true or not, we're not going to get into that discussion, but it's said. So, Think about if you were reading the other way around. If, if you started with Legree, and then you moved to Shelby. Shelby like, would look like yeah, hella nice. Yeah, you know, oh, it's okay. As long as the slave owners are like Shelby. So it makes okay. Legree look worse. Yeah. But doing it this way, you kind of it, it kind of shows how all of these circumstances set up Tom to eventually land in Legree's lap. Right? Also, by going through this journey this way, you get an opportunity to see Tom, the human being,
versus Tom the Slave. Because in, under Shelby's care and Augustine's care, he has a lot of freedom. You see him interacting with people as friends versus as a slave. Do you see Tom when he's with Shelby or with Augustine working out in a field? Do you mm -mm. see him really doing the tasks that you imagine a slave doing? No. So you see his human side. He's humanized, right? So then by doing that, by making Tom human in your eyes, you start to feel for Tom and care about Tom. And you root for Tom. You want him to make it, right? Now, by humanizing him, you can then move to the next step because then Tom becomes the Christ figure. How he sacrifices himself for Shelby, for Augustine, he stays with Augustine. And he tries to save Augustine's soul, right? Trying to convert him to Christianity. So, you see him become the Christ figure. Then when he gets to Simon the Grease, it becomes very clear, right? It becomes very clear because what does the Grease have a major problem with? And in chapter 32, you already know this, with his religion. He cannot stand the faith that Tom has, right? And here in the Grease, you have your true Satan figure. I've forgotten, uh, I'm not too sure what chapter it is. It's when he first gets them, how he says that he's going to become their new god. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he's going to become their church, right? He's a true Satan figure because he, he's never redeemed throughout the entire book. And no matter what he does to Tom, what does Tom hold on to? His faith. His faith through the entire novel. So by creating it this way, you have you know a Christ figure created in Tom, and a Satan figure created in the Greece. So that's what you could address with this type of scripture. But you see how both of these address how it's actually organized on the page and what could be its possible reasons for that. Or you don't have to know the reason, but what's the effect? Because unless you're a fairy teacher, so you don't know her reason behind it. But you can discuss the effect that it has on the reader. And so these are two clear structures and how it affects the reader. Okay? So does that make sense how these are three topical? Possible topics? Mm -hmm. Any questions? Okay, on Wednesday, you got to be ready for your literature circle. You will get your...